Hey y'all, new day, new verses. Let's dig into verses 30 through 33. Here we go. I have one request, dear friends. Pray for me. Pray strenuously with and for me to God the Father through the power of our Master Jesus, through the love of the Spirit, that I will be delivered from the lion's den of unbelievers in Judea. Pray also that my relief offering to the Jerusalem believers will be accepted in the spirit in which it is given. Then, God willing, I'll be on my way to you with a light and eager heart, looking forward to being refreshed by your company. God's peace be with all of you. Oh, yes. I love that with Paul dealing with all of the difficulties that he has over the course of his life, the difficulties of the ups and downs with helping the Corinthian church, the going out there, the, you know, depending on which side of the final trip to Rome you think this falls on, even the difficulties there that he shared the rejoicings of in Philippians. But I, I still think that this is well before Philippians. I think this is only first trip to Rome. But either way, I love the fact that God has Paul covered. Either way. Like, if this is the first trip or the last trip to Rome, it doesn't matter. Paul is in God's hands the whole way. And... I love that the only thing he requests of all of these people in Rome, of all of these people who are getting this letter, this letter circulated to them, that the only thing he asks for them, the only request, is prayer. And I think it's a beautiful thing, because prayer can look very different culture to culture. And I think in a lot of ways that praying like this to God the Father, through the power of our, me, our Master Jesus, through the Spirit, I think it invites a different kind of way to pray. Not just the quick, you know, Oh Lord, we beseech the Amen kind of prayer, which sometimes that's all we have to give, and God knows it. But I think it's the beauty of it that we're talking to our Abba, God the Father, our dear Abba, through the power of our Master Jesus, the one who is in God's presence right now, sticking up for us, that is loving on us, who loved us enough to die for us, is right there, through the love of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit, when we welcome Him in, dwells, and will fill us with God's presence, with God's love, with God's mercy. And it's a beautiful thing, to me, that Paul even writes himself, God inspired words of God hears us, our prayers. He makes them out of our sighs and our groans, our aches and our uggs, and, and when all we have in us in the day is just, uh, he knows that too. And he'll make prayers out of that, the Spirit in us talking to God. That we can come to Him in moments when we have nothing else to say to anyone or anything, but can talk to God. And say, you know, Abba, let's just chat. Just dwelling with Him. Because God will put on our hearts people who to pray for, who to lift up. He'll put on those moments. In other moments, sometimes God will just, when we're sitting there talking with Him, He'll just say, okay, lift up this too. Because sometimes praying with Him can be just as uplifting to get out of praying for what we need, or want, more accurately sometimes, and talking to God about what He knows is needed. Digging into a personal relationship and deep personal communication. Because He knows our hearts. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows the number of hairs on our head. So He knows our trials and tribulations. He knows our struggles. You know, Paul right here lists out the difficulties that is on his mind, that he's worried about the lion's den of unbelievers in Judea. Having the same kind of faith that God will shut the mouths of the lions as he did with Daniel, be it literal lions or the metaphorical ones of the Judeans who wish to rip him apart, because it's kind of the ad adversary he's been facing all of his mission. Since he was commissioned in Damascus. You know, it's interesting that he just puts this all before, like, pray that I'll be covered. Pray that God has it. Because praying that God has it 
is, well, like, please, God, take care of it. Well, he's already taking care of it. It's rejoicing. That's why sometimes I think prayer looks less like a checklist of things we want God to do and more an opportunity to dig into right and deep relationship. Relationship to be able to say, you know this need. Show me what you know I need. Show me what you know they need. Use me. Let my life be a blessing. I am blessed, so let me bless. And letting God direct us. You know? Because Paul's want, after he drops off this delivery, giving it in the spirit in which it is given, of generosity, mercy, love, kindness, compassion, the fruits of the Spirit, in many ways, that he would be able to go forward. And all of it saying God willing, knowing, trusting that God has it. Because the moment we start living with him as our master, we stop calling the shots. But at the same time, that's kind of a beautiful thing. Because it means we can develop trust in him. To know that he's got it. That each opportunity, even the stumbles, become opportunity to grow. Each trial and tribulation becomes a hot iron that sharpens the iron in which we are made. Made full, made strong, made beautiful, made bold. Not by anything we do, but by everything he does. So, I have one request, dear friends. Pray for me. Lift each other up before the throne. In intercessory prayer is a thing for a reason. And I'm not talking about the spiritual eccentricities of that at the moment. Just saying there is a gift for prayer. There is a gift for being able to lift up others. To be able to focus with God and be able to just bask in the glory of His presence. Because Paul's already, Paul already knows that God's got it taken care of. He, he's known that from the moment where God told him, my grace is sufficient, and Paul actually started to recognize, oh yeah, your grace is sufficient. Because he didn't want the handicap he was dealing with. I mean, I would have, most people believe it was a difficulty of eyesight, which I can understand a, a scholar not really wanting to lose their sense of vision. <laughs> Makes reading, trans, reading and writing a little bit harder. But at the same time, knowing that God's grace is sufficient, Knowing that God is greater than the difficulties, knowing that greater, God is greater than the trials and tribulations, then prayer can be as much a, will God cover Paul to, Lord, give him a fire in his spirit so that as he goes to Judea, he parts waters, or you part waters before him, rather. That kind of idea. And yeah, I know we're talking about a person who's been, you know, from our perspective of time, dead for a while, but... God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So, why couldn't we tell you talking about him as praying for him now? Or better yet, why not take the lessons that we have from it and apply them to now? Apply Paul's kind of trust of saying, well, God's got it. But I'd still like to lift it up. I'd still like those prayers of encouragement because we are in a knockdown, drag out battle against the enemy. And we need to lift each other. We need to hold each other up, and we need to do it in love. Love of the Spirit. The love that puts other people on our hearts, that puts others first. That kind of love. The kind of love that the Master Jesus shows, lives, demonstrates, so that we can come to our Abba. Each needed, because each separate together. The Trinity really is an interesting concept. But we get to see that each part of God welcomes us in. Like God the Father welcomes us in as His children. God the Son welcomes us in as the lost siblings that need to be brought to their Abba, the Spirit filling us up, burning deep within us, that we can keep going. The light in us that Jesus isn't going to hide under a bed or under, you mean, He says it Himself. You don't light a candle and then hide it under a bed. No, you put it on a light stand so everybody can see it. And that's what God will do. He will put his lights exactly where we need them. And even that can be a trigger to prayer. Of saying, God, put the light stands like Paul, like me, like literally every person who he gave a light to. 
on a lampstand where we can be used to shine for you. Everybody, every person who watches the same idea that God would be putting you on the lampstand that he has for you because he's already made you a light to put you in a place that brings others into him. As that is the commission, be at peace. I send you just as he was sent by the Father. And what does that getting sent look like? Sometimes I think it's just living in the kind of compassion, love, mercy, kindness, and generosity that Christ shows us. It looks a little different, and it can be a lot hard to practice. But that's the beauty of a relationship. It's the walk to learn how to do it. Because God's right there the whole way teaching us. So, back to the one request, pray. Pray strenuously. Lift up others. You know, and it's not to say that prayer has to be one specific, you know, there are prayer closets. Sometimes there's also just God that help that person. And maybe he'll trigger something for you to do too. I mean, it's all a chance to come together and lift each other up. We are made in his image, man, woman, humanity is made in His image. So, when we fight each other, at best, war, at best, is perpetuating the largest sibling rivalry in the history of existence. I don't need to go into what it is that it's worse. Everybody who's seen it already knows. And we can pray that things like that stop by lifting each other up. By focusing on God's mercy for all of us rather than the differences that may cause us to fight. And that's a beautiful thing that we can lay down us long enough to take up our cross, follow Him, and learn what it means to live as a true human one. Living by Christ's example. Because He started and finished the race already. He is the outline to which we all hope to take shape. His life. That is what we pursue. And I hope we pursue it together. Lifting each other up before the throne, basking in His glory and praising Him. Not because of the difficulties, but because He's greater than the difficulties. Not because of the pain, but because... By His stripes, we are healed. Not praising Him for agony, but thanking Him that He is greater than all the agony there is, that He already bore it. The difficulty is an opportunity to take up our cross and follow Him. All of it, an opportunity to dig in deeper, to dig in, dig in richly, the love of God. And we do it with prayer. A prayer that reaches out from the very core of who we are. The core that God knows intimately. The core that we might even not know, but God does. Speaking to our Abba. Because in the valley of the shadow of death, God is still sovereign and strong. God of the valley and God of the mountain. All of it under His control. So as I wrap up today and we go into chapter 16 tomorrow, I would just offer this. In the difficult seasons, pray. In the joyous seasons, pray. Not focusing on the ritual in which it is done, but focusing on the relationship with who you're with our Abba, our God. Because that seems a lot more fun to me. I will see you guys tomorrow for digging into Romans 16. I'll see you then. May His favor be upon you. And remember, you are blessed. You are loved. And He's not going anywhere on you.